Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to be doing more recursion. We're going to use recursion to create a range of numbers. In the previous challenge, we learned to use recursion for uh, to replace a, a loop. Now let's use it as a more complex function that returns an array of consecutive integers starting with one through the number passed to the function. As mentioned in previous challenges, there will be a base case. Base case means this guy. Like at this point, it returns the, the bottom situation. And then you pass in the same function. So they've got count here, minus one. So if n is three, it's going to just stack on. It's going to be three. And then it's going to say it's not there. So it pushes on here. It, it calls itself again here. And then it calls up to here. And then it's two. And then one. And then finally, it returns your numbers as one. And then we're just pushing numbers onto this array here. And then we're returning the array at the end. Looks like we're returning numbers each time. Which, oh, I think, you, yeah, you have, you've got to return numbers each time because the numbers are passed through the stack. Uh, say you want to write a recursive function that returns an array containing the numbers 1 through t whatever n, like 5. The function will need to accept the argument n representing the final number. Then it will need to call itself with progressively smaller values of n until it reaches 1. You can write this function as follows. At first, this is counterintuitive since the value of n decreases, but the values in the final array are increasing. This happens because push happens last after the recursive call has returned. So that means that it adds on all the numbers after everything's happened. At that point where n is pushed into the array, count of n minus 1 has already been evaluated and returned. We have defined a function named range of numbers. Here's the function named range of numbers with two parameters, the start number and the end number. The function should return an array of integers, which begins with a number represented by the start number. Parameters and ends with the number represented by the end parameter. The starting number will always be less than or equal to the ending number. Okay, so that means that the start number is not going to be 10 while this one's 1. Um, their start number will be... Uh, the starting number will always be less. Yeah, so this will be, it'll always be 1 and this will be 10. So they're passing in the proper order. It should also work for cases where both the start number and the end number are the same. So it should also work for when they're the same. Makes sense. It should return an array. So we're already going to pass this one if we were to run the test. Your code should not use any loop syntax. Okay, we're not going to cheat by using loops. Range of numbers should use recursion. It should call itself. So we, we're going to know that it, at some point in here, we're going to go range of numbers. And it'll probably be um, maybe something like start num and then end num minus 1. It's going to be something like that. Uh, so if we get 1 through 5, we want to return an array of 1 through 5. And so, I mean, honestly, I, I've got to look at this guy a little bit. Um, we want to say if start num is equal to end num, um, now we want to return the start number um, and then else we definitely want this guy to be up here we want to make the ver okay so now what we're saying is the numbers are going to be equal to the range of numbers minus n number so if n number is 2 and start number is 2 if we come into here we want to return the start number and then if it were 2 and 2 it would immediately return just a single start number which would be 2 so that's correct in our situation where they're both the same and then what if it were 2 and 3 if start number uh, we should say if start number is less than or equal to because then it doesn't make a difference okay and then end number um if it's two and three if it's if the start number which is two is less than or equal to the end number which is three it's going to go on to this thing and then we're going to say the numbers and we're passing in here well two and three now this end number um what we're doing 
will come into here and then the end number will be end number so the end number was three when we started and so we're going to pass it in here and then it'll be two so then it's the start number and the end number will be the same so the range of numbers will return the start number um, and then what we also want to do is we want to um, I think we need a results array no 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 we don't Yeah, we want to push the n, the end number. Yeah, we want to push the end number because it will be three in the initial stack call, and then the next stack call will be two, and then we'll be correct. And then we just want to return the uh, numbers. And we actually want to get rid of this return statement. It, well, it doesn't make a difference, but it'll never get called. And if we run the test, I think this should pass. It didn't pass. Cool. I'm going to put in range of numbers here and see what results I'm getting right now. For some reason with recursion, I need to test it here. So here I'm just getting one. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's being pushed in six times. I don't think numbers actually needs to be set as a variable there. Hmm. Okay, so my less than or equal sign was what was causing me problems. Um, this is just so hard, difficult to describe because it's recursion, so it's going to build up in a stack. Um, recursion is a situation where you can get a stack overflow, which, are, which is where for example, each time you call this with, for example, here, one to five, it's going to count down and then it's going to go five and then it's going to be four and then it's going to do three and then it's going to do two and then it's going to do one. And that's when it's going to, um, when the answers are going to be out. So what does that mean? So initially when we come in here, we've got the start numbers at one, the end number is five. Start number is equal to end number. No, because this is one and this is five. So we return the start so we don't return them, we go, to, we go here. And then we say we want our new situation to be the range of numbers to be one to four because it's n, it's five minus one. So then essentially we're running this, this function again. And so that just all stacks up and we keep doing that all the way. We go three, two, and then once it hits one, it comes down here and it just returns one. So the start number is equal to one and the end number is equal to one. And so we return the start number and then we get just an array of one. So the numbers as an array of one. You, on the, onto the numbers, we push the end number, which was, which was five initially, and then it goes to four, to three, and then two, and then one. And then finally, once we've run through that, this function, the, the initial run where it was one and five is actually the last one to finish. And then, so we've got the five there. So I hope that makes sense. Recursion can be very difficult. I actually still struggle with it and I almost never use it in production, but I've heard that it's important and that some people do. So uh, anyways, I, this um, should pass the test. So I uh, hope you guys found this one useful and we'll see you in the next lesson.